Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. Today I have some charming farmhouse DIYs for you. I'm making a darling little bird cage as well as cutting out another fun farmhouse window for you guys. It is also the last episode of the How Does Your Garden Grow series, so at the end you'll get a quick little tour of our garden at our farm. As always, if you do like what you see, I would love if you would consider subscribing, but let's get right into making that bird cage. I am so excited to show you this particular DIY. I think this turns out so fun. I'm going to make a little bird cage out of these emery boards and some spindles that I got on Amazon. So I do take just this little round wood platform that you can get at Hobby Lobby. I think I've seen them at Dollar Tree. I know you can get them at Joann's. Uh, I happened to find mine at a yard sale. Somebody was selling a whole box of different shapes of these. So I snagged that up so I'd have these. And I just take some wood glue and I glue a four inch insert, the inner portion of an emery board ring to that. And then I'm taking these, I believe they're five inch spindles that I got on Amazon. I will link them below in my description box for you so you can find them easily along with the emery, or not emery boards. Oh my gosh, you guys, the embroidery hoops. So anyway, I just take each of these spindles and use a little bit of hot glue and then uh, glue them all around. Use a little bit more hot glue for some support. And then I take some wood glue on a little craft stick there to spread it onto each of the top of the spindles and then I take another insert from an embroidery hoop and I clamp it I use my little Dollar Tree clamps to clamp it on to give it a good strong secure hold but before I do that I am going to use a little bit of hot glue that's just going to give it that little bit of temporary um, quick hold so that way it will dry quickly and then the wood glue can finish drying the next thing I do is take some embroidery hoops and kind of uh, fit them in and mark where I need to cut each of these. That way I'm going to cut three of them to make the top to the bird cage. And so I will kind of fit them in and I'll draw a little bit of a line where I need to cut. That way I know how tall I want the top of the bird cage to be. I will tell you from my experience that if you plan on putting like a little teeny potted plant or something in this then uh, definitely do not glue these in now just kind of dry fit them in and then when you you'll go and spray paint this and then you will put your plant in and then glue the top on because it's very hard depending on how much space you leave between the spindles to get things in and out i did learn this the hard way so i'm just passing on my knowledge to you and then I did clamp the top because I did put a little bit of wood glue there to help keep it all affixed together. But after I take off all of the clamps and everything, this is what it looks like. I'm loving it. I do have this little teeny finial that I bought in a pack of two or three from Hobby Lobby. So I just use a little bit of wood glue on that to get that glued right onto the top. I did spray paint it this kind of steel blue color. It was late at night when I spray painted it, so the footage was extremely dark, but you've all seen me spray paint before, so you know what that looks like. But I love how the color turned out. I will link the color of that down in the description box. But I take just a little bit of the plaster Waverly chalk paint and dry brush this on to give it that little bit of weathered look. And I love how this these two look together. I love this color of the steel blue. Uh, and I think that that little bit of dry brushing on it really brings out the details of those spindles as you go around. And I do just make sure that I get the inside of all of them and everything. And of course, you'll do this step too before you glue the top on if you're going to put a plant down inside. Uh, and then after you finish this, you can take, go ahead and glue those in. But I just really think that this white on top of this blue it just really sets it apart i think it makes it look very high end and like i'm seriously so excited to use this in my decor i think it looks so cute here's everything completed with the little plant inside of it this is just one of the little plants that i got at ikea could they come in like a set of three i think it looks so fun uh, this is just absolutely charming. I think it's going to be so cute. What do you guys think of this one? Are you guys big into bird cages? I absolutely am loving them right now. Okay, so I've been wanting one of these little half circle farmhouse windows and I've been trying to come up with a pattern of how to get a pattern to make one and I decided just to kind of 
freehand my own. So all I did was I just tied a little bit of twine to a pencil on some MDF board. And then I'm just kind of using that as like a little uh, guide to get my um, kind of perfect circles there. I know it's not entirely perfect, but that's part of the farmhouse charm, right? Is that you get to be not so perfect sometimes. So I do just go through and make a little arch at the top that's going to be the shape of the window. And then I do another arch um, about a third of the way up from the bottom. And then I'm going to make my little panes in there, I guess you would call them my little bars there. So I go ahead and I do three sets here and I just trace this with a ruler and then I go in and erase the areas that I need to. Now I do realize that I want to do a little bit smaller crossbars in this instead of the size that I did. So there's two different sizes to this little square ruler that I bought at Dollar Tree. And, uh, and so you can do your um, bars any type of size that you want. But I, when I was drawing this out, just decided that I wanted to do a little bit smaller. So I just went in and retraced that. And then I just went through and erased all of the lines where I was not going to cut. So it was kind of clear where I was going to be cutting. And then I do go through and darken all of the lines before I do pull my jigsaw out to cut the pattern. Next, before you can start cutting this out, you're going to need to drill some pilot holes in all of the areas that you're going to use uh, or that you're going to cut out with your jigsaw blade. So you just want to make sure that your drill bit is large enough that your jigsaw blade will fit through the hole if that makes sense to you. So then you just start wherever is most convenient for you with the piece of wood that you're working with. I just have a piece of scrap MDF board that I'm using. And I'm going to go in and what you do is you'll stick your blade down into the pilot hole and then you'll kind of curve around. You can see, watch what I do here is I put it through where that pilot hole is and I come start and I curve around and I get it down into that corner. And then I'm able to lift my blade out and switch directions with it to go up to get the corner space. And you do this with each of the little corners or points in every space that you're doing. So you can go slow with this, take your time. I wanna say that it took me about 40 minutes or so, 40, 45 minutes to cut this window completely out. I think it took about just as long to draw the pattern, maybe even longer uh, than to cut it out. And I just go through and get the rest of the space completely cut out all over the window. Then I take my sander and I'm going to sand each of the edges. I want to pay attention to all of those little kind of harsh edges. What this is going to do is soften those edges and it's going to give it kind of like that carved out of wood look that you want. Uh, it's going to be very farmhouse. It is homemade. It's going to look so vintage and um, really good in the space that I have planned for this. I do take some matte white spray paint and I just go ahead and go all over the front and the back just paying uh, special attention to the edges in it to make sure that you get in between all of those little cutout edges that you've made. Then I take this back inside into my studio and I take out my emery board and just sand down all of the edges to give it a little bit of a roughed up look. And then of course, you know, I have to distress everything. So I take my antiquing wax and I just go over the entire window front and back and dry brush this on. You can go as heavy or as light or you can completely skip this step if you just like the look of how it looks when it's sanded. I do take a little bit of elephant chalk paint and just lightly go over the edges with that. I do like the dimension that the little bit of gray paint adds to the distressing. But look at how amazing this turns out. I love this. This is going to look so great in the space that I have planned for it. I think that it was such a fun and such an easy project. This is a perfect beginning project for uh, those of you who have never used a jigsaw before. I am so excited to be getting together with some of my YouTube friends to do our last episode in the How Does Your Garden Grow series that is hosted by Jamie from Simple Roots Simple Living. It has been so much fun watching the different things in their gardens grow and all of their fun DIYs that they do. The link will be down in the description box so make sure that you click on that and see the awesome DIYs and wonderful garden tours that these other ladies have for you.
This next project is so simple and so easy. So you're just gonna take a mason jar. Any size will work as long as it has that regular mouth size to the opening of the jar. And then you're gonna take some crystal gems. I got mine from Dollar Tree, but you can get them at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joann's, any type of craft store. I believe even Walmart has them. And you're just going to take a strand of hot glue all the way around, layer by layer, all over the jar. And so you're gonna do these little crystal gems in rows all the way from the top of the jar down to the bottom of the jar. Then I'm gonna take the lid, and this lid just happens to be like the brass color. I know sometimes you can get mason jars at Dollar Tree that already have a black lid, so that would be perfect if you can get one of those. But I'm just gonna go all the way around this with some black, either acrylic paint, chalk paint, spray paint, uh, any type, and you don't even have to paint it unless you want to. But the reason I'm doing that is because I have one of these um, solar lights from Dollar Tree, and the top of it's black, so I wanted it to match. And those solar lights are the perfect size to push up in there. Just use a little bit of uh, strength to get that popped in there. And then you just screw that onto the jar and it makes the most darling little votive. You can have this in your house, out on your patio is probably the best place because it will get it since it's solar. But so cute and it makes such a fun little design. And I also had another jar from Dollar Tree. So if you've seen these, these will work too. And I did just put a few of the crystal beads, uh, crystal gems rather, down in the bottom to give it a little bit more of a fun light pattern. This one I did take my filing board there and just kind of had to um, file a little bit off of one of the edges so it would slip right into the lid of the um, of this jar. And then I just screw that one right on there. And then it this one has such a fun pattern because it has those cute little lines in the jar. But look at how cute those are. So simple and so easy for a little bit of ambiance to your patio or garden or even like a sunroom in your house. Super, super fun and so simple and so easy. I just love how great all of these projects look together. I think they are so fun. They would be so fun to use even in like a porch or garden setting since we're doing a garden series today. I think that they would be fun in your home. I love how these turned out. So my style. I would love to know if you had a favorite project that I did. Comment with that and your favorite emoji down in the comments. And I do just want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to my videos and giving me all the support that you have. And if you're new here, welcome. I hope that you consider subscribing. And as always, I would like to tell you to be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. Thank you so much, guys. And that link to the playlist for the other videos for the DIY and garden tours is going to be down in the description box. So make sure that you go ahead and click on that and check out the other awesome videos that are there for you. See you guys later. And then just a little bit of a garden tour for you to show you our fun garden at our farm that we do in the manure spreaders. We have these old farm equipment manure spreaders that we do a raised garden bed in. And I am so excited to say that we finally have started harvesting some of our uh, crops that we've been growing and we have uh, some squash as you just saw here is how awesome my tomatoes are looking here at the end of the month first of next month I am definitely gonna be in full salsa making mode I love to jar my own salsa it's so fun and I'm so excited that these beets are ready to take we love to make pickled beets and so they're ready that's probably what I'm going to be doing here this weekend is getting these ready to pickle we ate so many over the 4th of July. It was ridiculous how many we ate. But look at my tomatoes. They just need to start turning red so I can start doing some things with them. But it has been so fun. I think I also have a couple of peppers here to show you that we've got. It's definitely been a fun year with gardening. We are definitely in the middle of a drought. So water is like few and far between for us to water our crops. But we are definitely happy with the harvest that we are getting. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.